And now, allow me to introduce our last keynote speaker and panelist who will be sharing his thoughts and experience with us on the topic of the human factor in digital transformation. He is a leading business strategist and digital expert with over 20 years experience working with more than 100 companies. He has provided strategic consulting for the Council of Europe and the World Bank, tech startups, multinationals, and governments across more than 30 countries. He has founded five successful businesses in Europe and the MENA region and received awards for product innovations. As both an academic and practitioner, he holds a master's in global leadership and a doctorate in business administration. It is my honor to welcome to the stage Dr. Corey Block. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Kayf halakum liyum. It's good, right? Okay, we'll practice my Arabic after the session. I'm really, really excited to be with you. I need my little uh, clicker. There we go. Yes. So our previous speakers this morning, thank you so much, uh, Chris and Nicholas. That was amazing. Chris brought us like the grand human experience and the technology's impact on the grand human experience. And Nick brought us the organizational experience and how technology is impacting that. And I want to bring us more to the human experience. And by human experience, I want to talk about the individual employees in our organizations that are having to adapt to these massive digital transformations, some of which are in this room. Our leaders and our, uh, our employees, those people that are having to, to make those changes on a daily basis. So I want to talk about the human factors. We're, uh, we're humans, not resources, right? <laughs> so um, it wasn't so long ago in a galaxy not so far away uh, that I was called into a board meeting and asked to deliver a, a, just a three-hour kind of punchy workshop on artificial intelligence and its impact on business processes. And about an hour into this presentation, I won't tell you the organization. The general director was there. All of the directors were there. Uh, the director of engineering for this organization raised his hand. He said, Dr. Corey, I have a question. I said, I said what is that? He said, I, I thought artificial intelligence was robots coming to take over all of our jobs. And I looked around the room, and, and about half of the people were, were confused by the question, and they, half of the people were nodding and smiling. And yeah, you know, they were really connecting with this fear. And I thought, wow, this is, this is still genuinely a fear among leaders of our organizations, powerful leaders of powerful organizations. So I said, well, it's, it's not really robots coming to take over our jobs, but it is technology making us faster and smarter. And so one of the ladies who was a, a director of the, on the board, she said, she said well, are we, are we eliminating a lot of jobs? And I said, well, no, but we're augmenting them. We're making our people stronger and faster. So what would it mean to you if you could do your job better and make more money and only have to work for 10 hours a week? What would you do with the other 30 hours? And that simple change of frame helped her to understand what the impact of artificial intelligence specifically might be on their organization. And it set quiet, it set peace into the hearts of these very, very human men and women who were trying to make competent decisions about technology that they didn't yet understand. In another organization, um, I was actually doing strategy and restructuring for the, for the organization itself. I wasn't a part of the digital transformation process until the owner of the company, a beautiful, um, amazing second generation uh, local Arab leader, called me into his office and I, and I sat down with him and he said, he said, in our digital transformation efforts, Dr. Corey, we're installing a piece of artificial intelligence and I would, I would like you to help me uh, to lead the digital transformation process. And I said, why? Is everything going okay? He said, I think so. The problem is that I don't understand very much about what they're doing and I trust you. And so again, I saw uh, what could have been a catastrophe for the organization stemmed by human trust and human connectivity. And so I, I invested myself a bit in, in the digital transformation space there and was able to translate the efforts of these great technicians into a language that the, the owners of the or organization could appreciate, financial language specifically. In a third organization, uh, I had uh, one executive 
come to me as well and, and said very much the same thing. Said, look, can you, can you look into what our, what our DT efforts are doing? We have a head of IT, we've given him a great budget and we, we know from what he's told us that he's invested in a piece of artificial intelligence but none of us can really articulate what the expected benefit of this AI technology is. Can you help us to put a number on the expected benefit of this AI technology? And so they had this fear that their head of IT uh, had shiny toy syndrome and had gone into the shopping mall with a new budget and bought some spectacular piece of, of technology that wouldn't actually have any major business outcome. And all of these things really helped me to understand that the majority of the challenges that we're facing in digital transformation in our organizations these days really has very little to do with the technology. The technology is great, it's weird and wonderful, and we're learning how to play with it much better. But the majority of our challenges in this $2 trillion industry, we're losing a, a, about $1.5 tr uh, trillion of it to human factors. We are confused, learning, scared sometimes, and resistance to change uh, in addition to the legacy technology that we have in our, our established organizations, have become the highest risk factors in our businesses today. Now, in an established organization that's as old as I am, uh, Sabic, you're, you're one year younger than I am. I was born in 1975. Uh, so in, in legacy organizations like us, and in, in legacy people like me, I was raised on a Commodore 64 in the 1980s, uh, we have a lot of things to change that our born digital competitors like Skype, like Spotify, don't have to deal with. They don't have to deal with legacy technology. They don't have to deal with scoping and discussing and arguing on boards for months sometimes about the kinds of digital transformations that we want in our organization. They don't have to deal with posturing and protecting. They don't have to deal with silos in their organizations because we have 21 year olds with iPads writing billion dollar codes in their parents' basements now. And those are the disruptors. That's our competition. And like, like you said, we can't even see them coming. Half of the S&P 500, did you say, Chris, is, is gonna be, it, they haven't even been born yet. They're gonna be listed in the next 10 years. That's incredible. And that's disruption, and that's where the disruption is coming from, is that we have all of this momentum behind our organizations and our culture and our way of doing things and the technology that we use. And we have this tremendous human fear of capturing the new technology and adapting to it. And our competitors are out there writing code that we don't understand yet to take away our business model from us in ways that we can't possibly imagine. This is a very, very real fear. It, it actually, in a fourth organization that I was with just 18 months ago, the CEO, global organization, you would recognize the brand, but I won't say it. Global CEO came to me and said, look, uh, Dr. Corey, I, uh, I'm gonna retire in a few years, and I'm not confident that I have a business model that will last as long as I will in this organization. And I said, what do you mean? He said, fourth industrial revolution, artificial intelligence, blockchain, 3D printing, automated driving. He says, I, I can't see around those corners. And, and I'm concerned because I have thousands of families to feed and I want to make sure that I'm competent enough to feed them. Can you help me? Again, it's a very, very real, real concern. 84% of our digital transformation initiatives will fail and not due to the technology. They will fail because of a lack of alignment, communication, and improper resource allocation and capabilities. Human resistance to behavior change is the biggest threat to success in DT, and that takes three major um, forms. One is inertia, that is, this is the way that we've always done it, and therefore this is the way that we've all, we, we should be doing it now. So if you hear someone, especially when we're talking about the adaptation to new technology, say, well, we've always done it this way, why don't we just keep doing it this way, that is a, that's a yellow flag. The second one is doubt, which is uh, the narrative that, well, I don't, I don't think it can work and I don't think that it will work. Uh, and then the third one, of course, is cynicism. So in digital transformation, things always go wrong. And as soon as something in a digital transformation effort goes wrong, there's a dozen people in the organization ready to take advantage of that small mistake and say, well, this will never work. It can't be done, and then they spread the rumor throughout the organization that the digital transformation efforts are doomed to fail. 
And sometimes it's the rumor that dooms them to fail. It's not the technology. It's the people, the humans that are involved. And so these are the 12 largest uh, human factors in, in digital transformation failure that I've identified, and that is the lack of alignment to business outcomes. Very often our executives don't understand what the benefits or the expected benefits of what we're doing uh, uh, is the lack of awareness within the organization. There's just a, a lack of overall communication of the strategy and what can be expected and what is expected of us. Uh, there's micromanagement or mismanagement of teams, uh, whether it's development teams like agile teams or, or just or regular implementation teams. Sometimes our DT executives become distracted by the minutia. They become so detail oriented that they, they lose track of the, the larger vision and that can be, that can be a weakness. Or, as I've given in example number three, that uh, they get distracted by shiny toy syndrome. There's something in the market that they want and they just go out and get it, whether or not there's a business application for it. Sometimes it's the inability to translate our DT efforts into a language that our executives can appreciate. And very often it's just a lack of control over external vendors or a lack of adequate training for internal users. And now it is, as I'm sure that you've experienced, uh, sometimes it's a loss of great talent to competitors that are more prepared than we are to empower that talent. And then the last three is a, a, a fear of resistance from, uh, or sorry, a, a resistance from fear of being replaced, which I've given you an example of. And then I think the last two, which I want to give you a, a, a case study on, are slow decision-making processes and poor prior prioritization of development. Now, slow decision-making processes, this tends to come from outside of the DT efforts. This comes from the executive, uh, executive block, and so this is our leadership. And then poor prioritization of, of uh, development, this comes from inside of our DT efforts. So I, I want to split the blame here between two groups of humans, those that are involved in the executive management and decision-making, and those that are involved in implementing the digital transformation processes, and give you a, a highlight of just one particular case study. This comes from the Black, Black Swan uh, case studies on Maersk Line. And this is a sample of what a delay cost might look like. A delay cost is the cost of a decision-making process or a prioritization process resulting in the delayed implementation of a development. So it could be a feature, it could be an app, or it could be a piece of software, it could be a piece of hardware, it could be a changeover from one system to another system. But the delay is caused by misprioritization or a slow decision-making process. If you take the peak cost out of the delay cost cycle, then this is what a delay cost would look like over time in a, an innovation that is meant to last for a number of years. For example, an AI-powered invoicing feature. So AI-powered invoicing feature in this case study was expected to yield a $4 million a year advantage based on increased earnings from interest. Now there's other, in, there's other uh, benefits. There are a couple of efficiency benefits and there's also increased deployable cash flow which is an advantage but I wanted to narrow this down into something that's a little bit easier to, to grab onto and that is just the increased earnings from interest that's expected to result from this AI powered invoicing. The delay cost from taking time to make that decision about implementing or the delay cost from misprioritizing the development of this feature is about $76,000 a week, which would result in a four-week delay cost of roughly $300,000. Now, if you take a typical development cycle, which is when you identify the feature in week one, then you put it up for, for uh, approvals and prioritization. It can take 14 weeks to get to the proof of concept, which takes about a week to develop. From the proof of concept, it takes another seven weeks for prioritization and communication and approvals. And then the development and testing takes maybe three weeks for this particular feature, after which another eight weeks of prioritization and approvals are required in order for our very human organizations to catch up with the development of a five-week uh, feature, which has now cost 29 weeks in delay. So the total delivery cost, or de total uh, delay cost of this feature it, the delivery might have cost $500,000, but the delay cost is 2.6 million. We could have developed this feature six or seven times, and it would have cost us less than paying the delay cost of misprioritization of, of uh, features and development 
and the, de the delay of, of decision making, slow decision making processes. So if you snooze, you lose, right? And that's why I advocate taking a very human approach to digital transformation. And so these are the things that I, I want to bring to you. Is I, this my encouragement is that we take an enterprise approach to focus on soft skills in digital transformation. We need our CDOs to be exceptional translators between technical uh, teams and our business teams, our marketing teams, our compliance office, our compliance teams, our legal teams, our executives and managers and trainers. We need to be able to communicate very quickly across those groups of people from an enterprise perspective. And for those of us who are leaders in these organizations, I'm convinced that these are the most important competencies that we need to develop in digital transformation now. Because we have the technical expertise, we do, but we need to be amazing coaches as well. We need to be great at coaching our leaders, coaching our teams, empowering our people. We need to be amazing storytellers. We need to be able to convert or, or, or talk about what it is that we're doing in our organization in a way that's meaningful to other groups of people. We need to be great agile leaders. That is, the ability to form teams for specific periods of time and, and, and prioritize our development very, very quickly. That we need to be better at that. We need to be better business analysts so that we can make the financial case for the features that we're trying to, uh, to sell internally. We need to be better at mastering our own attention. There are so many distractions today. Now, if you're a person that works with a screen in view, your, your distraction level is about every 40 seconds you'll be distracted, and it will take you an average of 23 minutes to get back into flow if you're working in flow. Reflective listening. We need to be better listeners as leaders so that we can understand what our, what our people need from us and what they expect from us and what their fears and concerns are in the adaptation of their work to a digital transformation. Strategic prioritization, as I talked to you about, should be measured in delay cost. We should be prioritizing the, the delivery of features based on their delay costs, which can be calculated from the beginning. And then the last major skill is Luddite techie translation. We need to be able to convert our language as technologists into language that all employees can understand and appreciate. And we need to be able to convert the fears and concerns of all of our employees into language that our technologists can appreciate. So for you, as employees in SABIC, this is what I'm hoping that you will do moving forward. If you have a digital transformation taking place in your department, please embrace the change. This is natural. It is going to happen. It is, uh, it's like when we converted from horses to cars. It didn't kill the horse industry. It built a car industry. When we converted from, from bank tellers to ATMs, it didn't kill the bank teller industry. In fact, there's more bank tellers being hired now than there ever were when ATMs were invented. It just created a whole new ATM industry. There's no reason to approach these things with fear. So seek to understand the things that, that you fear because it's a very human thing to fear what we don't understand. Also accept that augmentation is not replacement. I, would, I hope that we get to the place where all of us can do our jobs better, faster, more effectively, and more profitably on 10 hours a week of work, if that's what we choose to do. And the last one is just to recognize, as we started out this morning with, with Dr. Brower, that 4IR is just the next step in human development. This is the natural course of history, and, uh, and we hope that you embrace this change and you succeed with it, and you become an amazing, profitable community uh, with these technologies that are available to us today. Thank you.